All right, Mom, we're on, uh, here we are in St. Louis University, and you went to school here. Tell us a little bit about your schooling at, at this esteemed university. Yes, I came here in 1954, right out of Marquette High School in Alton, Illinois. And I was here until 1958 when I received my baccalaureate BS degree. And I met my husband here, Charlie Brown. We dated in my junior and senior years. We would go to Gaslight Square and around all these buildings. Shoto House I'm looking at. Uh, you lived in Marguerite Hall, right? First I time. lived in Marguerite Hall and uh, Charlie lived in Walsh Hall. And after we graduated, we married and had four sons in five years. Yes. Ed, Bill, Dan, and Greg. That my husband was a military officer and we moved a lot. And I love coming back here. And when he was alive, he liked coming back here to all the reunions. Yeah, beautiful place, beautiful place. What were some of your hangouts around here, Mother? back in 56, 57. Well, like I said, Gaslight Square at Central West End was very big back then. And we would go to a place, I think it was called Smokies, not sure, but anyway, there were a lot of celebrities who were there, started out, Pat, um, what was her name, Pat, uh, or Phyllis Diller, the Smothers Mother's Brothers. Brothers. Uh, Barbara Streisand. And Barbara Streisand. Right. We saw all of them before they became famous. And we would eat at Garavelli's sometimes. That was a great place to eat. Pastores. We Pastores. Mm -hmm. And we went to mixer dances. That's where I met Charlie. At sock a, hop, right? Sock hop mixer dance between the dormitories. Yep, we want to be here if it wasn't for that. Right. That yeah, one chance encounter. Thank you very yeah. much. That's the way it worked out. It's changed a lot. It's a very pretty campus. And, um, Speak up. It's, uh, the fountain is nice. This all used to be roads coming through here, right? This was West Pine. This and, was West Pine. We're standing right. on it. And spring came through the other, the other way. So right. we, we were here when spring came through. Um, yeah. I think the upgrades are really nice because what they do is they mix um, the old with the new and you'll be able to see, see footage of it. There's a lot of new structures but they really get back to uh, the way it was in the 1920s and 30s and my understanding is this is the oldest university, private university, west of the Mississippi. Is that correct? Yeah, that's 1818. 1818. Yeah. And the yeah, Jesuits founded? Years next yes. Two years, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you have very many Jesuits teaching you? Uh, yes, at that time we did. We had quite a few Jesuits on campus. Father Schulte taught German. I never did very well in his class, but I liked the German club, <laughs> and I was secretary of it. And he gave me a fairly good grade. He called it a participation <laughs> Greg, grade because I participated in the German club. It's called a gentleman's C, right? Yeah. The Jesuits were, were very nice to young women at that time because there weren't very many young women on campus. Right. And they thought it was great that we were coming in and being part of the student body. Yeah, it was a so, brand new thing then. Yeah. So they were very nice to young women. And 35 years after you graduated, I went to confession, and guess who the priest was? Confession. Father Schulte. Uh, and I always remember a buddy of mine said, don't go into that priest, no! <laughs> and I went in anyway, and um, it was a rather <clears throat> long confession, I guess you could say. Father Romero was another very, very nice, friendly, Jesuit, and he came to our wedding oh. in Alton, along with Father Schulte. And oh. Birchie? Father Birchie, mm -hmm. yes, he became a Jesuit. He was a good friend of my husband's at Walsh Hall, mm -hmm. and died just recently. 
but the, he was a very good friend. So um, the Jesuits were very important in our lives. Well, St. Louis University, if any of you have kids, is a good university to go to, right in the heart of down, well, not downtown, Midtown, yeah, St. Midtown, Louis. Near the Fox Theater. And it's, it's amazing, if you ever get a chance, walk on over here, because um, it's like a, an island, don't yeah. you see? And it's, it's, it's very like a park, nice. Yeah, like a nice a, park. A, a large park, that's exactly right. Well, we're going to show you a little bit more of St. Louis University, and if you get a chance, come on down and visit. Here we are in front of St. Louis University Law School. Well, it's, it used to be the law school. Oh, that's true. It's the old law school. I gotta remember that. But um, I was confined here for three <laughs> years, and Ed? I was released early for good behavior. Well, now, yeah. I was from 88 to 91. I attended law school here, and Ed? Yeah, a little before that. A little before that, a little okay. Before that. And what are your fondest memories of law school? Graduating. Oh, come on. I was glad to get out of here. No, I enjoyed it. We, we used to go to uh, Clark's, which was uh, McLeod, and then Humphreys, of course. And uh, they had a Calico's. He used to ran up some big bills at Calico's. And I worked while I was here. I was uh, what they called an escort. I would walk the co-eds from one building to another, make sure they got there OK. And I worked down at the uh, Fed School, too patrolled the parking lot. I had a radio. That was my weapon. I would throw it at somebody if they threatened. So, well, let's uh, go, go back to the restaurant you were talking about and your credit card. Um, what was going on there? Calico's. Calico's. Yeah, I had a Visa card. I ran it over the limit and eventually they wouldn't take it anymore. So uh, Those were the days I think they had a book and they had to look yeah, it up in the book. Usually they didn't, but once they did and they said, no, I'm sorry. So that wasn't pleasant. I, I had an experience similar to yours is that I had a credit card and I was out on one of the few dates I ever had and the waiter came back and said uh, your card is not valid and in addition we will receive $50 if we confiscate your card. Seize the card. <laughs> Seize the card for $50. I said oh my goodness. I said well what am I going to do? I um, You got your girlfriend to pay. Well, there you a, go. It wasn't a girlfriend. <laughs> but, um, a date. A date. But no, a lot of good memories. We had some really good professors here. Professor Griesbach, Professor Emil. Yeah. Um, Griesbach helped me get my first job. Did he? Shout out to the professor. Yes. And um, well, who else did we have? Um, oh, Professor Emil. Yeah. He was quite a guy. He uh, actually fought uh, right after the Battle of the Bulge in Germany won the Bronx Star and never said a word about it. Nobody knew uh, until he died. He died a few years ago. And then they had pictures of the newspaper article and uh, took out a whole German artillery nest all by himself. Quite a, quite a interesting professor. He was, professor. he was a professor of contracts. And you always dreaded when he would call on you because he would grill you over and over and make you look like an idiot. It was pretty easy to make a law student look like an idiot. So the other thing, I remember a buddy of mine going up to Professor Immel and he asked him, were you a World War II vet? And Professor Immel said, yes, I was. And he goes, well, which side were you on? <laughs> <laughs> which is because he, he uh, very funny. Yes. Yes. That was a good one. But yeah. good days at law school. You always try to remember the good times. Uh, the not so good times were sitting in a library at two o'clock in the morning, yeah. knowing that you only had half the half your assignments completed. You I remember did. lots of parking tickets, oh. and I'm having flashbacks as my car is parked on the street here, and I hope I don't end up with one. Well, goodbye from St. Louis University, and next stop, where are we headed to? I don't know, but we'll find out. All right. <laughs> okay. Can I get a picture with you guys? Sure, sure. of course. You have to know our phone number first. 888-8888. In Illinois. Illinois. I'm an Illinois person. Oh, perfect. 555-5555. Yeah. Ready? Ready? Go. Thank you. Hey. Oh, yeah. I'm from Illinois. Say hi to the camera. In 1999, Pope John Paul 
II came to St. Louis and he came right here to the new cathedral and we were here for it and I lived right here across the street and we watched him through the window and he gave a little speech and uh, everybody was very excited. Uh, the, uh, they warned us all not to uh, use the roads because the roads would be so crowded with thousands of visitors coming to see the Pope. The Pope Mobile would scooch up and down Lindell here at incredible speeds. <laughs> he got all the lights. Um, he didn't have to stop for any red lights. And Ed, tell, tell about the Pope party that you had. We had a big Pope party. <laughs> and uh, when the Pope came, we had uh, yeah, quite a few people to look out the window. We were all shouting and uh, he came out. He just kind of waved like this. And then he went back in and we, the other thing I really remember about that is they had sharpshooters uh, stationed mm. all yes, over the did. cathedral. Yes. Yeah. to uh, protect him. He'd, he'd been right. shot once, of course. So. And I remember you're saying, I have the Pope in my front yard. Mm. That's right, we had the Pope. We were yeah. going to invite him over to the party, but uh, he had previous <laughs> obligations. And uh, that was fun. We we uh, come to this cathedral. We were just here for my daughter's uh, confirmation just a month ago. We were at the cathedral here. Mom and came. A friend of ours ran up the street, so he was sure to see the Pope Mobile. Mm. Yeah, remember? That's right. Yeah. Oh, he Absolutely. ran so fast, so he could see that, catch yeah. up with him. It was yeah. very. It was a very, very important event. Yeah, it and, was. And what happened after? After the Pope came. Lots of miracles. The uh, sisters of uh, I forget the order, but they had prayed for good weather, and it was perfect, beautiful blue skies the whole time the Pope was here. And as soon as he left, we had an ice storm the <laughs> next morning. So that was one miracle. The other miracle was our football team, professional football team, whose name I refuse to say, <laughs> won the Super Bowl the next year. Yeah. That was truly a miracle. <laughs> Two miracles. Though. That's Two great. miracles that the Pope brought with him. So now he's a saint, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and those were the Pink Sisters. The Pink Sisters, that's mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. exactly. Right. Yeah. So um, yeah, it was a good place to live. I enjoyed living here. And uh, now let's, uh, let's go forward, onward and upward. Now this is considered a Central West End, correct? Oh yeah. Sure. All right. So let's continue onward. Onward and upward. All right. If you've been injured in a car wreck, I know what you're probably thinking. Perhaps I can deal with the insurance company on my own. But remember, the insurance company has a staff of professionals working for them. You should have a staff of professionals working for you. At Brown & Brown, we'll make sure your car is fixed right, make sure you get a rental, and make sure you get better. In Missouri, dial all threes, 333-3333. In Illinois, dial all eights, 888-8888. And at Brown & Brown, if you can't come to us, we'll come to you. Forest Park in front of the 1904 World's Fair Pavilion. And Ed, <laughs> tell us a little bit about the World's Fair in 1904. You were there. 1904, yeah, that's right. I was, uh, wow, I was uh, getting my Social Security check, the first <laughs> one that year. No, it was a little before my time, a little before Mom's time, too. God bless you. But it was a beautiful uh, World's Fair and, uh, you know, meet me in St. Louis and all that. And this is Otis. Otis is uh, man's best friend. Two most popular members of the firm, I always say, are Mom and Otis. And hey, what about your brother? <laughs> well, Come on you're, now, you're about that's fifth. not right. About fifth, so. Thank you. I bring uh, Otis over here to the park all the time, so if you see me and Otis, just stop by and say hi. And uh, we're always happy to uh, accommodate. You wanna shake Otis's hand, Dan? No, I don't. Not particularly. I really don't. I mean, I, I have a love of animals, but just not your dog. <laughs> Anyway, behind it's us is, uh, can be. or in front of us, I should say, is the Boathouse, which is always a fun place to go. And, you know, it's one of those pe places that sometimes it's off your radar. And if you ever get a chance, come on down here. And it's beautiful. You can take a boat ride, have a couple cold beers, enjoy life. Enjoy the lagoon out there. It's a beautiful sight mm -hmm. with Bring the your boating. Dog. And then, We'll talk briefly about our former mayor, um, who 
was paddling out. Oh, you know the story better than I do, don't you? No. No, he was paddling out with his little paddle boat, and he got stuck. And when he got stuck, they had to come and rescue him. And afterwards, he said, We're, this is terrible. We can't get stuck. Ah. So he had a vendetta. And what happened was he just went ahead and dredged everything so nobody would get stuck anymore on their paddle boats. That was a story. And But it's a beautiful day. It's nice. You're, Ed's going to climb all the way up there to the top of the, the hill. Yeah, before. We've been to weddings up there. Our cousin got married up there. And it was the windiest wedding I think yeah. I was ever there. I mean, the wind was just so strong that literally everybody... Going to keep the tablecloths on the tables. Yeah. Anyway, God bless Otis. I will shake your hand, Otis. Otis wants to say something. Hello, if you want to need a lawyer, call Brown and Brown. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Gosh, come on, Ed. Ed, get it. <laughs> come on. Here. Cover right. him up a little bit. Wait. Goodness sakes. If you need a lawyer. Here's a little respect for the animal. If you need a lawyer, call Brown and Brown. But, oh, come on. <laughs> Next up, we're going to do the Muni Opera, where I saw a lot of concerts. And from there, we're going to go, well, who knows where. We'll find out when but we get there. On the road with Brown and Brown. That's right. We're going, we're going. And, and Otis. Brown, and Brown, Otis. and Otis. And there he goes. Come on, Otis. Otis, stop the dog. Continuing on the road with Brown and Brown, and here we are now at Forest Park in front of the Muni Opera, as you can see behind. It's called the Municipal Theater, but people know it as uh, the Muni Opera. And Ed, do you have any memories of oh, being plenty, here? Oh, plenty, yeah. Seen a lot of stars here. Seen uh, Milton Berle. Mm. That was uh, two by two. It was Noah's Ark, a play about Noah's Ark. And just last year, we went. I took Mom to see Oklahoma. That was a lot of fun. Really enjoyed that show. That was high energy. And uh, yeah, it's hard to uh, become a, an actor here. It's very high quality. I tried my daughter in a Muni, and you find out that there are some kids in St. Louis that really, really are sharp, and they've been doing it since they were two years old. So competition's fierce. All right, who played the main role in Oklahoma the movie? Oklahoma the movie? The movie. Ah, uh, I liked Eddie Albert, but he wasn't the main role. Well, he was the who was uh, the woman's the woman? Uh, sure, Shirley uh, Jones. Right. Yeah. And how did she later claim fame? Well, the Partridge family, and um, she was the mother of David Cassidy, stepmother. Stepmother. Yes. Yeah, step Isn't it Jack Cassidy? Didn't he die in like a fire or something? Yeah. A cigarette or something? Yeah, died in a fire. Terrible. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, there's, um, I have memories here because they used to have rock concerts here back in the late 70s and all throughout the 80s. And saw like the Moody Blues. Um, uh, give me your higher love. <laughs> what was it? Who sang that? Uh, give traffic, me your, uh, uh, Steve Winwood. Steve Winwood. Yeah. All right, well, Dave. And um, they had, the, well, it wasn't the Eagles, it was Don, it was Don Henley. Um, but actually, it was a very good show. And these, um, at the Muni, the last five rows or six rows are free. They yes. still are. Yeah, they are. So in rock, when they had rock concerts here, they'd give us these wristbands. And then we'd you know, wait, and then we'd mm -hmm. have free seats to see a lot of these bands. But, yeah, it's a great place to, to look at. And a great yeah, place to... I would ride my bike over here. I live not far. And um, yeah, I'd come in, just see the second half of the show, you know. For free. Hey, wait not? a second. Yeah, you got it. We contribute. You have season tickets, I right? Do. Yeah. I so. do. Yeah, but I just went to the box. We're not freeloading. I just went to the box office and I didn't renew them in time. So I'm, oh, I'm no. back there and he's there seems to be a problem. And he's clicking oh, the keyboard and I said, Well, what's the problem? He goes, Well, your tickets have been resold. I said, Doc got it. So what do I do? I said, Well, find me some better seats. No, we don't have anything yeah. better. So uh, and they want to stick you in the middle of the row and way up high. And I just said, no, I'll just buy season, no, I'll just buy single tickets this year. Well, tickets are like 11 bucks. I mean, you can afford 11 bucks, can't no, you? No, I'm, I'm 
okay yeah. with that. I think you can handle it. My that. regular seats were like $75 yeah, a piece. Yeah, so, you know, I'm trying to save you some money here. Well, look, you don't have to yeah. save me any money. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I can handle myself. I'm an adult, yeah. too. Well. All right, this has been a, a very long day. And being that I have to be with my brother all day, Oof. we're just going to, you know, Can't talking take about it anymore. boxing gloves or doing something. All right, we're going to have it out. That's is it. Come on, let's go. Not now, but we'll get some oh, yeah. boxing. We oh, need no. those right big, right big gloves. No. Nope. Eh, Air fists. Yes, okay. Next 1900, year. pretend. Jeez. I'm John L. Lewis, and you're Rocky Marciano? Balboa. No, Boom. Rocky Balboa. <laughs> One punch. Mm -hmm. Out. Anyway, so if you're ever in Forest Park, I, I, I would certainly encourage people to come on out here. It's some of these uh, places, you forget about how nice it is. And parking wasn't that bad at all today, was it? No. Didn't get a ticket. Yeah. Knock on. <laughs> knock on wood. All right. Well, continuing with the, on the road with Brown and Brown, we are headed in some place else. And where we're headed, I am not quite sure, but we'll get you there. decided to take a little break and what better place to take a break is Ted Drew's frozen custard. Mom, what do you think? Chocolate custard, yum yum. Mm. And what's the best uh, part of your custard, Mother? The it's it's very chocolatey. Is it? And I like that. Mm. Mm. Very chocolatey. Well, Ted Drew's has been a foundation of South St. Louis for oh, since the 1930s, I, I believe it was 1932 that when they started the Ted Drews, and everybody thinks that they started Ted Drews in Missouri, but it wasn't Missouri. I believe it was in Florida where they actually started, but it was Mr. Drew himself moved it up here. Some of the best frozen custard I've ever had. And um, would you agree, Mother? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and continuing on the road with Brown and Brown, here we are in front of Ulysses S. Grant's cabin. And Ed, what did you find out about the cabin and Ulysses Grant? Well, it was actually owned by his wife's family. So. I think uh, his wife called him useless, if I remember the uh, story right. And of course, this was gravel, and this was all just, oh, a dirt road back in those days. Not much here. And uh, then, of course, the Bush family bought it. This was uh, the Bush family farm, and they would stop off between the brewery and here at the Bevo Mill, where we have seen earlier. And Ulysses S. Grant, if I remember the story right, went from here to Illinois where he had a company of troops and he uh, told the story during the Civil War. His first battle, well it was a skirmish, was against the Confederates who were over this hill and he remembered very, being very, very worried uh, when he uh, was sent off to attack these guys. Came up over the hill and they'd all left and he said after that I knew that they were just as scared of me as I was scared of them, and it was a lesson I never forgot. Very good. So it's a good thing to know in the legal profession, too. Sometimes the best defense is a good offense. With Brown and Brown, you get a good offense. Good point. And another uh, story about Grant's farm, I think that it was, didn't he receive 80 acres and a cabin as a wedding present? That's right, from his wife's family. From his wife's family. and you can called see, him useless. You can see the, uh, the cabin right back there. And they still have the, what do they call that, where they used to uh, hook up the horses to? Yeah, the, the bridle, the, the, the buggy or whatever. Yeah. He's, he wasn't much of a farmer. He never liked it. And he said he could hardly wait to leave to go command his company. And of course, he became the commanding officer of all the troops and eventually president of the United States. But in all fairness, in like 1857, my understanding was he was put in charge of dredging the Mississippi River. And he came up with some remarkable inventions and ideas. You're thinking of Robert E. Lee. Uh-oh, sorry. <laughs> well, Other I, side. All right, well, let's talk about Robert E. Lee. <laughs> 
Hey, well, let, let me let's talk about um, Where did the surrender take place? Appomattox. Appomattox. Let's Virginia. talk a little bit about Appomattox. Where, how cordial was Grant with uh, Lee? Well, Lee didn't like to lose. He wasn't very happy about seeing Grant. He just wanted to get it over with. But uh, they knew each other well in the old army. They fought together in Mexico. And uh, I remember the story that Lee, when he heard that Grant had taken over the Union Army, said that we're in trouble now. Grant uh, won't make many mistakes, and he'll take advantage of any mistakes that I make. And that's exactly what happened. But they had superior number of troops. I mean, yeah. that was, and they had the northern industry as opposed to the southern. Yeah, the, the south sort of was run over by the Union steamroller. It was uh, not a fair fight. Sherman steamroller all the way to Atlanta, burning Atlanta. Yes, he did, and then to the sea. That's true. Yeah. Well, Brown and Brown here at Grant's Farm, and God bless Ulysses Grant. If you're ever where, where is it? It's in front of City Hall. There's a statue of Ulysses. Statues, and then if you reach in your wallet and you find a $50 bill, you'll see his picture right on there. That's true. All right, off we go, continuing on the road with Brown and Brown. Thanks for continuing to join us. Hope you're having a good time. And we're on the road again. This way. On the road again. I'm just hanging on the road again. Do, 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 do. I don't think we have the rights to that song. Uh oh. <laughs> Sing something uh, generic. <laughs> <It's flat. laughs> Happy birthday to Dixie, you. there you go. Here we are in front of Afton High School on a very busy McKenzie Street. And Afton High School was established in 1930. I think the present building was built in the 1960s. And Ed, there is a, a famous alumni who went to school here right across the street. And who was that? It was John Goodman, who also played Fred Flintstone in the movie. And Afton High School has a champion volleyball team. Well, that's true. So we're very proud of them for that. Uh, we have a lot of clients who went here, too. One of our employees' sons went here. We just ran into him coming down the street. And a good shout out to John Goodman. He was on Roseanne for, what was it, like 10 or 12 years. And he's a movie actor now, and he's been in a heck of a lot of uh, movies. And my understanding is he played on the football team here at Afton High. And then afterwards, he got a scholarship to Missouri State University. But when, after he got a scholarship, he started drama classes, and he liked acting, and the rest is history. So. A good shout out to John Goodwin and everybody who is coming out of Afton High School right now as we speak, and also for all those who um, have graduated from Afton High School in the past. And if you went to high school with John Goodman, give us a call. I'd like to know what kind of student he was.